Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Christian Cuthbert of Rockville. Welcome to our week-long trek through the mountaintops of Scripture. We have covered three major mountaintops in the Old Testament. The promise of deliverance on Eden, the holy mount of God, the illustration of God's substitutionary plan in Mount Moriah, and the scope of God's redemption, creating for himself a people on Mount Sinai. Today we continue with three New Testament mountains, beginning with Mount Hermon. From Genesis 3.15, God promised that he would send someone to triumph over the serpent, to crush his head and undo the damage Adam had done. Throughout the Old Testament, we learn more and more about who this deliverer, this Messiah, will be. He will die in our place, as we learn in Genesis 22. He will be the Word from God, as we learn in Exodus 19. About 2,000 years ago, this promised deliverer was born here on earth. He did not come the way that people expected. In the Old Testament, we learn that this promised deliverer would rule on David's throne forever, come from Bethlehem, and be born of a virgin, among many other descriptions. When Jesus was born to humble parents in a stable, there was little evidence he would ever ascend to David's throne, much less rule forever on it. But as he began teaching, discipling, and performing miracles, it became clear that this man was not just a man. Finally, in one dramatic episode, Jesus' identity came to light. Jesus asked his disciples who that son of man was, and they responded in very diplomatic terms. Well, some say he's John the Baptist, some say he's Elijah. They answered Jesus as if he was asking for the correct answer on a quiz. But then Jesus pressed them, who do you say I am? And Peter responded, surely you are the Christ. Jesus responded, this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. After this episode, Jesus took his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, and went up to a high mountain. Now, traditionally, this mountain has been identified as Mount Hermon, but the scriptures don't actually specify. On this mountain, the cloud of God's glory descended, and Moses and Elijah appeared. Jesus' appearance changed, and these three favored disciples got to see Jesus in his glory. Jesus proved what Peter proclaimed was true. He was the Messiah. Jesus was God himself. Peter got so excited that he wanted to build three shelters for the special guests. But Jesus explained it wasn't time and led them back down the mountain. I find this story fascinating, not just because of the miraculous claims it makes. Jesus led three disciples atop the mountain because such mountaintop experiences can be valuable. Yet at the same time, he led them back down the mountain because, at least for the time being, our Christian life is to be lived in the valleys. This mountaintop experience reveals something remarkable about God's plan of redemption. The man promised all the way back in Genesis 3.15 would turn out to be God himself. The substitute illustrated in Genesis 22, the ram that died in the place of Isaac, would be God himself. The word that Moses foreshadowed would be God himself. These events on Mount Hermon underscore God's original promise that the Messiah, who we now know to be Jesus Christ, came to reconnect us with the purpose, relationship, and life with which we were created. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to continuing our devotional hike through the mountaintops of Scripture on a special mountain with you tomorrow. Thank you. You've been listening to Christian Cuthbert of Rockville, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.